is Mrs. Reichelt, and our next video is going to cover both the ureters, the bladder, as well as the urethra. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so the ureters are basically these slender tubes that are attaching the kidney to the bladder. So we've kind of we've seen this picture before if you've seen some of the other podcasts, but this is the kidney. And then the ureter are these long, slender tubes that are connecting into the bladder. So they're continuous with the renal pelvis, and they enter the posterior aspect of the bladder, and peristalsis aids um, gravity in urine transport. So remember from, um, if you were watching these videos on the digestive system, that peristalsis, it, peristalsis is the alternating contractions of forward and backward squeezing of muscles to force um, materials through a some sort of lumen or some sort of hollow area and that, that in this case would be the ureters. The bladder is smooth, a, it's collapsible and it's a muscular sac. So there's uh, basically your urinary bladder is this right here and it temporar temporarily stores urine uh, it is a it has a trigon. A trigon is a triangular shape. Basically, it's the purpose of the trigon is to help the urine kind of filter downwards into the urethra. Um, so there are three major openings in the bladder. You have one opening for each ureter. So there's two ureters total, and then you have one opening into the urethra. So in males, the prostate gland surrounds the neck of the bladder, um, whereas the females don't have a prostate gland. So that's, that's one of the differences there between uh, the bladder. So the urinary bladder wall is made up of three layers of smooth muscle that are collectively um, basically called the detrusor muscles. And the mucosa is made up of transitional epithelium. Um, hopefully you remember that transitional epithelium sort of has kind of wonky shape, so it's really hard to tell. I guess these are pretty uniform, but it's hard to tell whether it's stratified or if it's columnar or it's basically the, the purpose of having lots of different shapes is so it can expand and contract, so it's made up of transitional epithelium. The walls are thick and folded in an empty bladder, and then the bladder can expand significantly without increasing internal pressure, which is very unique. All right, so the actual bladder capacity. Um, so a moderately full bladder is about five inches long and can hold about 500 milliliters of urine. So this would be an empty bladder right here and then a completely, um, I guess, full bladder there. And then it's capable of holding twice the amount um, twice the amount of urine. So it can hold more than 500 milliliters of urine. So if you really had to hold your urine for whatever reason, um, you could, but um, it holds approximately 500 milliliters pretty comfortably. The urethra uh, is a thin walled tube that carries urine from the bladder to the outside of the body through peristalsis. And we talked about peristalsis again there. Uh, the release of urine is controlled by two sphincters. Uh, you have the internal urethral sphincter as well as the external urethral sphincter. Basically, both of them are responsible for um, allowing urine to come out of the, uh, the bladder into the urethra. So this is an involuntary made up of smooth muscle. The external sphincter is voluntary and it's made up of skeletal muscle. And then the major gender differences between males and female urethra is, has to do primarily with size. So in the female, the, the urethra is between three and four centimeters. That's about an inch long. So that means that the opening of their body and their urethra is very small when compared to where the bladder is. This is why women typically suffer um, more predominantly of urinary tract infections compared to males. Um, it has to do with this urine, um, or I guess the size of the ureter, whereas in a male, the urethra is much longer. It's about 20 centimeters or um, 8 inches. Basically, the, the ureter in a male is going to go all the way up through um, the length of the penis into the body to the bladder. So it's hard for bacterial growth to go up that 8 inches within the time frame of a male voiding or going to the bathroom or urinating. And then the location, females, um, it's along the wall of the vagina. 
in males, it's through the prostate and through the penis. So uh, the, the, I guess the location of the urethra tract is also different in males and females. And then some gender differences here. The major functions of a urethra for females is that it carries ur urine only, whereas males, the urethra is going to carry urine as well as a passageway for sperm cells. So we'll talk a little bit about how um, your urethra uh, cleans out urine, if sperm is going to be um, in those passages, and vice versa, but we'll talk about that in the reproductive system. So if you want to learn about that, you're going to have to skip ahead a little bit. And then our last slide on the, the urethra is actually voiding. So both of those sphincter muscles that we talked about have to open to allow for voiding. The internal sphincter will be relaxed after the stretching of the bladder. And then the pelvic nerves will initiate the bladder to go into reflex contractions. Then at that point, urine will be forced uh, past the internal urethra sphincter. And then the person will feel that urge to, to void. And then the external sphincter must be Voluntary, re voluntarily relaxed um, in order to be able to void. So that basically wraps up the, the ureter, the bladder, as well as the urethra, and I hope you found that helpful.